Hello and welcome to the session creation tutorial. In this set of videos I will be explaining how to create complex sessions inter incorporating AI, uh, navigation points, score and other elements that you might find interesting such as requirement to load cargo, requirement to load passengers, passenger train schedules and other uh, things that you might find interesting or important for your session creation. In this particular video, I will be focusing on the very basics of session creation. As such, this video will be quite short compared to the others, but that is all right. I also have to note that this entire tutorial segment is recorded in one go. <clears throat> so, it will contain unedited footage of me explaining and showing every single thing. If you have any questions regarding anything, you are free to ask in the comments at any point about anything. You can edit your comment as much, you can ask as much you, as you want. I will happily answer everything. And if your question is good enough, that it will require quite of a lengthy explanation, I am willing to make a video about it as well. Uh, another point of note is that this creation tutorial uh, is applicable to pretty much every single release of trains after 2006. Because maybe even 2004. I haven't played 2004, so I don't know how it is in there. But uh, I can guarantee that after 2006, it's the same functionality. Uh, few things might differ, and that is maybe the UI elements, but it's generally the same. And the available uh, programming might differ as well. Since I'm doing this in 2019, trans 2019, the available programming, there's basically everything. I can use every single aspect from the previous games as well as the newest one from this game. Right, so um, let's get into it. Now to start your session creation, you have to get into the surveyor. So you click driver surveyor, find that out that you want to use. I will be using Sanchi Europe Mini. Click View Sessions and then click Create Session. Now what this does, it will load you into the editor, but you are not going to be editing the route, you're going to be editing the session. However, you may recall that I've, well, if you watch me for some time, you may recall me using the Edit Session to actually edit the route. And this is a quite neat trick and tip that I'm going to say during the loading screen. If you are creating a route and you are getting tired of the countless times the game creates a new save game or new save session called default and you just have a list of like 60 default sessions in a row in the menu, what I recommend you do is not click edit route in the menu but view the sessions click the latest default session and then click edit session. And when you load in, just change layers to the route layer and you can continue. Now I just mentioned layer, I will get to that in the other video. For now, let's stay with the basics. So you can see we have loaded in. This is our route, this is our workplace. The entire route is now your playground. So first things first that I really recommend doing before anything else is to go into the top left corner and click system menu in other games it will be different obviously as I said the UI elements will be different and then click save as and you want to save new session now let's say that you already know what you want to do in such case you're just going to name it what I recommend is the route name so in my case Century Europe Mini, dash, and what kind of session it is about. Passenger train, freight train, 
some other special kind of train so you can basically type down the name of the train in my case let's for example say i'm gonna be making a passenger train so in this european country the passenger train is called os and then some numbers for that train 6548 for example that would be my session you for example can also do like uh i don't know morning passenger run that's also a viable option or if you want to be creative and create a series of session in like that connect one to another and to end and to start basically then you can also do i don't know for example workday part one or workday part three part 89 69 i don't know 420 if you so desire right um in my case i'm gonna be focusing on firstly on the passenger side of the tutorial as such i'm gonna be using this session for all passenger related tutorials and as such i will name the session for this basics video as os1954 because why not Random set of numbers is good enough, nobody cares. Unless you're a hardcore fan, in which case you will go obviously for a more realistic number. I am not forcing you. It's up to you what you name your session. It's just my recommendation. Route name and then the session name. Right, so as I said, I want to do a passenger train. Okay, I know where I want to start and where I want to end. I want to start here in Ihlanovo and I would like to end in here, for example, in Hoine Udolia. Simple as that. Just nice little circle around the map. So the first thing that you want to start with is placing down a train. Now you can build a train, train car, tr uh, car by car, like that. Or you can use an existing consist, like that. Rotate it around, move it around into the position you want to start at. And if you so desire, you want, you can add some other cars to it to make your train longer, for example. Just like I just did. Simple as that. Move it around some more if you want. Know where you want to start. Now, I'm going to be starting very simply. And that is that the locomotive is already attached. The train is fully prepared for the player to just hop in and drive. Simple as that. Next thing that I want to do, that I highly recommend doing for everyone, is systematically name your trains. So that you can know where each one of them is. So if you have, I don't know, in America, if you're going to be focusing on a freight train, for example, you're going to have be some bnsf sd70 or sd60 something or sd45s and you're gonna have a lot of them running around doing stuff you want to know which one is where so you will need to name them accordingly as such i recommend creating a naming system that you can understand that you can follow what i personally use is that i type in ai to signify that oh this is an ai train it's not a player train, it's an AI train. And to and then I name it the what type of train it is, passenger or freight, and then where it starts. Okay, so for example, AI Freight Ihlanovo 1. Number of it. So that you can get a little vague idea of which one is which. Now obviously the more trains you have, the more of a system you need for this naming so that you can wrap your head around it but if it's something simple where you don't have a lot of trains then simple naming system is good if you want you can mix two naming systems or three or uh, you can do the naming as you want just do something about it so that you can wrap your head around it if you're starting out and don't get confused because confusion leads to mistakes and mistakes lead in this game when you're creating a session to possible anger as you will have to redo the session several times over and over and over and over and nobody wants to do that so do something that you can wrap your head around now 
we have our player train in here but we need to name it as i've said make make a system so select the properties edit properties or press p and then click on the engine let's name this player train that's it you don't need more because you know oh hey this is the player chain i want him to go a to b with c d e stopping at that fair enough easy like that so yeah that's all good now some other engines some of the engines will have like some scripts that you can possibly uh change in the properties but that's only if you want to i will not be going into that that's something that uh you can choose to do i will not be doing any of that because i don't need it here right you have your probably train named okay what to do next so up on the left in the top left corner you have a paper sheet with a pen across it click on that and you will see a nice little thing called edit session can also press Control R to open it. Clicking this edit session opens a very nice big window, or it is bigger than my set because I have resized it million times over and over, and the game finally remembered it. You can see the name of the session, you can see the session description, and you can see rules. Now, for the rules, I will be going into them in depth in the next video. Right here, we are just going through the basics so that you can get an idea of what is what. Now, you already named the session when you were saving the session first time around so that you know what you want to do. Session description. Write your own, sorry. Anything you want can go in there. What I personally like to do is to mention what type of train the player is taking. So you can, for example, say locomotive name and uh, like what type of train, passenger or freight, container, coal, blah, 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 express, slow train, stopping train, fast train, stuff like that, metro, tram, bus, plane, who knows, maybe even ship. It's up to you. Uh, also, I like to mention weather and time. So, for example, you would write, take a control of fast train from that's a that's quite an important aspect to tell the player where he's going and from where so i'm gonna be going from ilanova to hoine udolia you will be driving now the session name uh, not the session name the locomotive name uh, class 754 locomotive if you want, you can also put in the company name. So, SSSK class 754 locomotive in my case. In your case, it could be, I don't know, BNSF SD45-2 or anything else, pretty much. Uh, now, weather and time. Put that in and your basics of the description is pretty much set and done. Um, you will be driving in the rainy morning of september let's just say that date you can specify i don't do that but if you want you can it's not as necessary unless you deem it is so you have your description you have your type of train actually hold on fast passenger train like that I'm gonna change that up so yeah, if you find something that you want to change anytime you can just write it in it's a normal text field just type it in so take a control fast passenger train now from Ihlanovo to Hoine Udole, destination a starting point you will be driving locomotive name uh, you will be driving in the rainy morning of September time and weather simple as that now you have that it's best to now click on the check mark and again system menu and now just click save 
or just press Ctrl S and overwrite existing session to save your current progress. Now this is something no very very noteworthy. If you are a route builder or a session creator, you know how much this game likes to throw random bullshit at you. I'm gonna say it like that. The game likes to throw random bullshit at you. As such, I, I really cannot say this enough. Remember to save. That's motto of pretty much... I wanna say... Well, it's not exactly a motto of everyone who's been into session building, but it's something that everyone must have figured at some point when creating a route or a session. Remember to save. And I will be repeating that over and over again, just so you remember to save. Because you don't want to lose that progress. It will infuriate you if you're new, or even if you are already older and skilled at it. It will infuriate you. So be prepared for the game to throw any random bullshit at you. And for the love of God, remember to save your progress. And if you want even more safety, go into the content manager, select the session and export it as CDP. So that you have a backup available in case the game decides to destroy itself completely. Whether it was through your actions or through the actions of some other content or through the actions of the game itself. In case something goes very wrong, have that backup prepared and ready. All right. Very important. Remember it. It's the most important thing of everything. Remember to save. And yes, I will be flying around this for the next 15 minutes. Right. So now that we've saved, edit the session again. Now you see your rules. By default, there should be driver setup, driver command, cleanup DRL trains, quick drive rule, consist data handler rule, and interlocking tower path selection UI. Uh, I noticed and heard that if you have a different version of TRS-19, such as I believe it was Platinum or Trains Plus, that not all of these rules are in there. And uh, this is uh, mainly because of the combined driver and surveyor nowadays, and possibly through some other problems. But that doesn't matter because Well, what we will be doing is basically a session for everyone. And if you use the United Driver Surveyor, it's not going to work as you might expect. So really add these six rules in here as default. Driver setup, driver command, clean up the rail trains, quick drive rule, consist data handler rule, and interlocking tower path selection UI. Now you heard me said that add them in here. How do I add rules? Okay, let's get through that first so that you know how to add these six basic rules for every session. Now, interlocking tower path selection is not important, but it's good to have it just in case. It's good to have it. On the bottom left, you have add. And if you hover your mouse over it, it says add rule. So if you click on that, it will load a list of rules. Now these here rules are very different and what these are, these are pre-programmed parts that you can put in to form a session. Essentially you're creating a puzzle but you are able to cut the pieces into the shapes you want. That's the way to say this. You are basically selecting from this list of rules, adding them in and moving them around and combining them to create the puzzle that will essentially, in the end, work as your session. So, yeah, I'm going to get into that when I, explain, when I will be explaining the session rules in detail in the next video. This is just basics. Now, for, so yeah, add those six rules. I've said them twice now, so just rewind and let's go edit them one by one. So driver setup, if you select that on the bottom, 
you can see edit. If you hover your mouse over it, it says edit rule. So you click on that and a window will pop up. Now this is how the rules work. You add a rule, you click edit and a window for that rule will pop up, which will allow you to program that window accordingly. Right. So we can see that we have the driver set up here. You can see that there's a driver already assigned to our player train. The driver's name is J.R. Ryan. He's on auto deck move and we can remove him. We can also on the bottom see add another driver. And we can see four check marks available over here. Remove all dri existing drivers first. Generate new drivers for empty trains. Very for social completion and focus camera on first driver. So they have, they're pretty much self explanatory. These check marks on the bottom, we're gonna start with those. They're very self explanatory. Focus camera on first driver, obviously. First driver in the list of drivers. That's another driver, so you see. First driver over here with the player train. That's the one who's the camera going to focus at the beginning of the session. So you want to keep that in because this driver setup is going to be our, init our initial driver setup. The one that's going to happen at the very beginning immediately. So you want to keep focus on. on Focus camera on first driver. Wait for social completion, that's up to you. What happens is that if you have it checked, the rule will be considered complete once every single train completes its queue of AI commands. We will get through that, through the AI commands at the late, in the next video. So, I don't know which one. I'm going to be dividing the videos up into their respective pieces, or at least I will try, because it is everything so interconnected, it's going to be hard to try and divide things up. So, at most, so most of the time I will probably end up merging several explainings together into one. But this is purely for the basics. So whether you check this or not depends on your further, um, on your further development of the session. We're gonna find something where I can use that, and I will show you when I can. Now above that, we have generate new drivers for empty trains. Now what this does is if you place, I don't know, 10 locals on the route, all 10 of them will have drivers in them if this is checked. If you uncheck it, none of them will have a driver. This is something that pretty much you want to uncheck almost immediately for every single driver setup in uh, in your session because if you have a lot of trains it will be very annoying to edit so uncheck generate new drivers for empty trains above that remove all existing drivers first and that's something that you instantly uncheck because what it does, if you have some kind of, I don't know, let's just say you have uh, two trains on the route with already assigned drivers. And this rule, somewhere further up in uh, the session, comes along. You, what, it, what will happen is that those two drivers that are, have been assigned to the train will be replaced by the ones in this new driver setup if they share the train so the drivers in the new driver setup role further down in the session will replace the ones already assigned to the same train in the driver setup they will not touch any other train if they will touch only the trains that have been already uh, preset like this, right? Simple as that. Now, since this is the initial uh, driver setup, you want to keep it checked, but for every other uh, driver setup that you come across, uh, you want to uncheck it. But I will show you a very rare situation where you might find it very... Uh, helpful to keep it checked to remove the existing drivers first no most noticeably when to when you want to replace a driver in a train 
I will get to that in one of the next videos. Right. So uh, above you can see now that we have like the drivers. Um, I'm going to remove all of them. And now you can see that you just, you only have the add another driver highlighted and underlined now over there. So you click that and you have a list of drivers. Now from here, from this list of drivers, you can choose which drivers you want to add to this driver setup. I, for example, want to add a driver called Svedar. Because why not? Now you can see he's in here. You can see his icon. You can see that uh, what vehicle is assigned to. Currently he's assigned to none. And that's why the vehicle part is highlighted in red and underlined. Then you can see his name. And then you can see that he's in auto detect mode. Now I'll be going through these one by one. So first things first, we only have one train on the map. And uh, as such, if you click on the vehicle, the text that says vehicle, it will open a window and you can select to which train you want to assign this driver. I want to assign to player train, so I'm going to select that and uh, click check a check mark. Driver Svedar is now assigned to the player train. Now, playing as Svedar, yeah, that's nice and all, but I would guess you want to, um, in some rules, you pretty much need to uh, use drivers instead of the trains. Now, what this means is that certain rules can be activated by drivers assigned to a train, and other rules can be activated by just the trains. So, what I'm gonna do to make it more visible that oh hey this is the player because you can have you can repeat the drivers as much as you want but and this is very important the AI commands and the rules that require driver are gonna be confused if you have drivers with the same name so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna name this driver player. And every other driver, even if they are the same, they have to be named differently. So if you have two drivers named Adair, for example, you want to name them Adair1 and Adair2. Otherwise, the game can very easily confuse them and assign one to the other, and vice versa. So they will get mixed up. So, very careful with that naming. Next up, you can see auto detect. Now, what does this mean? This means that the driver's status is automatically detected by the session. That's nice, but I like to have it manually selected. So, you can you can click on that, and it will open a window, and it's basically a driver owner. You can select AI driver, auto detect, first human player or multiplayer driver. We're not doing a multiplayer session right now, so we're gonna not focus on that. There's AI driver, auto detect and first human player. Now I already said auto detect, yeah it's nice, but we're not focusing on that. So we have AI driver and first human player. Obviously our player is a player is a player, we have him in a player train, we're gonna select first human player. If you have AI, you're going to select AI driver. That's important. Why? You will figure out later when we get to the so to the AI configurations. It's because I'm gonna just say it now. Uh, it's because uh, if you have it as AI, you cannot. Um, as far as I've noticed so far the player is unable to override the AI. Well, they can override it to, a, to an extent, but like they cannot take control of it. They can at max stop it. But they cannot drive it. Right. So now we have this set up. You just click the check mark. Good. Click check mark and save.
remember to save. I open the session again and let's go through the other rules over here. Driver command. Open it up. You can see a lot of things. What are they? They are commands. What commands? Driver commands. But what exactly? AI commands. This is the library of stuff you can select that will become available for your artificial driver, drivers running around doing tasks. These are the AI commands. This is the library from which you can select them. Now, for my purposes, I'm going to select Autopilot. I'm going to select uh, Change Direction command. I'm going to also click Change Destination sign. Uh, next up, that is good. That could be used. Delete train, drive schedule. Drive via is going to be unchecked. Uh, time and weather change could be. You can select that. Uh, headlights on off, horns. And this is probably like the most confusing stuff. So follow me through here. Instant load command. Instant load low cost. Any of these two. Instant unload, any of these two. Instant unload locos. That's it. Nothing more. Next up, you take load passengers, uh, move to train, navigate to and navigate via. Uh, if you have scripted trains, such as the TGV, for example, you want to use the uh, open nose and close nose commands. I'm not going to be selecting them. Next up, you want to have pants for pantograph search. Priorities. Uh, over here, set maximum speed to is good to have just as a backup. I'm going to select kilometers per hour since we are in Europe. The first one is miles per hour. Uh, next up, STV drive, terminate passenger train, uncouples from any of these two. And. That is all for the default selection that I always go for. Those are the default driver commands that I select for all of my sessions. They make stuff a lot easier. If you know what they do and how to use them, they're pretty much self-explanatory anyways with the naming. So, yeah. You, you, it shouldn't be a problem to pretty much understand what is doing what in uh, <clears throat> in those commands next up clean up the rail train once again you can set it to whatever you want this is just a timer for how long after the derailment happens those train cars and locomotives will be removed from the route you can change this to whatever you want really much hours minutes seconds even i'm gonna keep it a default of one minute uh, consist data handler rule and interlocking tower path selection UI. Those are not going to be edited in any kind of way. So the last thing that we will edit is the quick drive rule. Opening it up presents you with a wall of text. What is this? Pretty self-explanatory and uh, when once you once you read it through. So there's set time to time, so hours, minutes with a rate of speed, speed of time basically. Uh, enable gameplay session mode, enable in game health by default, set default control method, realistic mode, set default elements, yada yada yada. It's here. Just read it and you will get an idea of what it means. So, what we want is uh, that we want to start in the morning. Okay, then it's 10 o'clock is good enough but let's click on that 10 and let's change it to some other morning time cool so uh, let's say um, i don't know eight and let's click on the zero zero for the minutes and let's do like um i don't know 27 oh i didn't mean to put that zero there this is 27 speed of time so this is how fast your time will progress one time is real time two x is obviously twice the speed of real time and so on and so forth. I'm gonna keep it at one. <clears throat> Enable gameplay session mode. 
Um, basically what this does is that it restricts your access when you're driving to certain uh, functions. Create and remove consists is disabled, creating drivers is disabled, and other kind of things. Now what is what I mean by this? It's not that it's going to change the editor. No. It's going to try it's going to change the aspects of those when you actually drive. What this means that okay you have the session done, you're going to drive it and you don't want the players who are driving the session to fiddle around with some trains on the map. So you're going to enable the gameplay session mode. And that will prevent them from doing such things. Now, while you are testing and stuff like that, let's keep that off. So do not check the gameplay session mode. Next thing is enable in-game help by default. Uncheck. What this means is that all the junction levers that you can see around with like the arrows and just pointing left, right, green, red, you know, if you disable this check mark, those will be hidden by default. They can be hidden manually by pressing Ctrl H in the driver. But uh, if you just disable this, it will uh, be disabled di directly at the beginning and you don't have to worry about anything. Next up, default control method 2, easy mode, realistic mode, this is basically control setting. DCC is the easy mode, it's the rotating wheel that you can change to apply power or to start or to reverse, you know, stuff like that. It's basically like uh, model train control. It's the easy mode, the default mode that your uh, quick drive spawns in. And the realistic mode is also known as the cap mode, and that is where you actually have to operate the levers. Forwards, backwards, neutral, dynamic brake, blah blah blah, power blah blah blah, train brakes, independent brakes, and you know things like this. Those are controllable in the realistic mode. This realistic mode also enables the controls in the cap. If your train has a cap that basically supports the movements of levers inside the cap view, then go with the realistic mode and you will be able to basically control that movement. Either on the HUD, on the outside, in the bottom right, or by actually moving the levers in the cap. Now you can prevent player from changing the setting. If you click that, the player will be stuck in the realistic mode. Or in the easy mode, depends on what you set. Simple as that, explanatory enough. I like to keep this unchecked so that uh, players can basically choose. Though, keep in mind that the trains behave very differently in easy and cab mode, easy and realistic mode. So, um, you want to make stuff accordingly. And uh, even though I myself don't uh, check, the easy like uh no not that uh, i don't check the prevent player from changing the setting i still recommend driving my sessions in the cab mode so i'm automatically by default setting it to be when you start driving in the realistic mode because of the way it behaves and the way i program my sessions i always program them to the realistic mode setting Right, next up is um, you can see that the realistic mode requires achievement. Now I generally don't uh, choose or play around with that, but what you can do with it is that you can basically make the session be drivable on, in easy mode only unless the player has some, at least some kind of skills, some level skills in uh, something and that something is what you choose so the player needs to reach a certain achievement before they can play with the realistic mode which is quite an interesting uh, mechanic but i've never used it before but what you can use this for if you have for example a steam train and uh, so what you can do is basically lock the realistic mode behind an achievement of i don't know uh, 
operate steam train for 10 hours something like that it's up to you really um next up is the set the default element realism level 2. now what this means is that you can change what kind of realism the the elements are now there's non arcade and realistic and once again you have the option to prevent player from changing the setting now i'm gonna check that instantly because i don't want the player to change the uh the derailment setting let's say that i want the derailments to be realistic so i'm gonna click that instantly and i want those realistic settings to stay realistic for the entire duration of the session now you may be confused what does this mean non arcade and realistic does this mean that oh the trains will finally fly off the tracks of the cliff into some kind of ravine or something no they will still end at the uh, they will still stop at the end of the track or just when at the spot where they derail because this is not a derailment simulator everyone who's who has at least some kind of brain cell will tell you it's not a derailment simulator if you want to derail go play derail volley or something like that or train simulator this this is a railway driving sim this is a train driving simulator you don't derail shit here and it's been talked about way too much for people to stay calm about at this point and they'll just yeah tell you to just bugger off if you want to fly off into i don't know moon but this changes is the physics around derailments if you click it if you select none the trains will not derail at sharp junctions uh uh for sharp junctions uh at junctions that are thrown against them and are sharp enough they will not derail when you pass a, uh, a curve at very high speed uh if you select arcade uh hold on no in non actually still you will still also, you will however derail at the end of the track and that's in all of the settings in arcade what it does is um that you will derail at only a certain setting at a certain point now i haven't been figured out i haven't managed to figure out if this point is a junction thrown against you that's sharp that's that's uh, too sharp or whether it's you going across the across the turn way too fast and uh, but i have to say that i believe now this is just what i think because as i said i haven't been able to figure it out i believe that it prevents you from flying from derailing at sharp corners when you're going too fast but it doesn't prevent you from derailing at wrongly turned junctions that are too sharp and then there's a realistic setting which obviously will make you derail at sharp corners as well if you go too fast simple as that nothing more to add to the drill elements um next up is to set def the default units to now what this means imperial metric or default default is what's default to the route metric obviously kilometer meter hour uh sorry not not hour kilometers per hour and the imperial is miles per hour so uh i'm gonna be changing it to metric because obviously it's the better unit that's just kidding we are we are in a european country there are kilometers per hour here is gonna be metric click check mark another check mark and save and uh yeah congratulations you have the basics of the session done now as you get better at this then yeah, obviously i had spent i have spent a lot of time explaining every single aspect of this but in reality if you know what you're doing then changing these few rules takes maybe five minutes at maximum maybe even less i myself have to say i think i could do it in like three minutes because yeah i still take my time to like properly think about stuff if i haven't figured it early but if i had to speed run it i would say a few seconds but i'm not bragging i'm not just saying it's quick to set this up once you get to it but yeah those are the basics and it took me 45 minutes to explain them so yeah thank you for watching the first tutorial
In the next one, I'm going to be starting to focus on the passenger train aspect of the sessions. So that's going to be like the schedules, there's going to be navigation points. Well, navigation points are going to be pretty much for everything, but uh, ma ma mainly for the passenger trains is going to be the schedule. But um, I'm going to see if I can squeeze that out into like a separate video instead. So in the next video, I want to focus on the navigation points and the score and the preparations for like the entire like ranking session and like all the complex systems that will follow up and how to well not even follow up i believe actually the next video we're gonna be starting to getting into the complexity so um yeah i know this is quite of a chaotic ending but yes the next video is gonna we're gonna be starting to get into the complex stuff of the session creation so navigation points score maybe even schedule so yeah thank you for watching and um if uh, once again if you have any questions regarding anything of this and that you want to ask go right ahead actually hold on no i'm gonna keep it for another video never mind <laughs> never mind all right so as i said long unedited footage this is me doing one long take on this so yeah thank you and see you